What up everybody, Scuffy here, and it is time for the decklist video for Tybalt Mar. Before we get into it, everybody, if you haven't already done so, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel uh, so that you don't miss any of the videos that we do here. Decklist videos, strategy videos, news updates, whatever I've got to share, I want to make sure that nobody misses it. Tybalt Mar was the fifth Sons of Horus warlord added in with the Galaxy and Flames expansion. Uh, really enjoy the character as well as the way he plays. Uh, played him a bit uh, at the start when I first got him. Took a little bit, didn't get him in packs, had to wait for him to be in the shop. And then kind of tabled him a little bit for other decks that were getting out. There's so many Warlords added with Galaxy and Flames, it was hard to just pick one. But then I got the mission and I figured let's do a mission build. So. I played him without the mission, and I played him with the mission. At the end of everything here, we're going to talk about the mission video, but I'm going to kind of give you my, my thoughts between the two of them, because uh, while they play similar, I definitely feel there's a different level uh, between the two. You can tell the gap. There's a gap between them, and, and I'll explain which is better, in my opinion. But before we do that, let's talk about Tybalt Mar. So, Tybalt Mar... Very simply, he's got a battle honor. I love warlords that have got battle honors. Gives a mark of chaos to a friendly Astartes. Uh, and then when you need troops for two energy, he puts in play an Abacal Squad. The Abacal Squad is just the old standard uh, drop pod 2-1. Just a starter Astartes, but you've got a warlord who makes troops and a battle honor that boosts troops if you've got them on the board. In conjunction with that, the Chosen of the Four, the Sons of Horus mission, you have to give Marks of Chaos to a friendly Astartes six times. And then you get the reward, which is... <clears throat> actually, i got to go into the collection for you to see it. Uh, basically, whenever you play a Sons of Horus Astartes, they get a Mark of Chaos. Or Sons of Horus Troop, not just any Astartes. So that works with their, their vehicles as well. So, that's important to note because you want cards that give marks of chaos and you've got to have <laughs> you've got to have sons of horus cards to benefit from that thankfully there are a lot of cards within the faction that either rally gain marks of chaos or they gain marks of chaos from different ways so you can really uh ramp up your marks of chaos it's not too hard to get some games you get the mission some games you don't the games you get the mission are nice you don't need the mush mission but we're playing a mission build so let's do some replays, let's talk about the deck, and then we'll show off some, some cards and, you know, general thoughts. Okay, so one thing with Tybalt Mar's ability, he comes in at a medium initiative, so he's not always going to go first. But the good thing is, is there are some troop drops, some pretty good three drops, as well as the, uh, the four drop troops, and the Sons of Horus counterattack can be very nice. It gives you that one extra energy which lets you play one turn ahead of curve. Now against the Sons of Hor uh not Sons of Horse, rather, the, the Space Wolves, this can be a little tricky depending on the Warlord because uh, they've got flank and you're giving them free flank with the drop pod so that can give them pack attack if they're leaving rust. It's not only can they flank and break the drop pod, but then they get an attack again or they get an attack boost or they get ward or the heal one. So it's not super reliable. So you've got to play a little bit smart. You've got to kind of figure out ways to, to bait them out. Now, Oath or Make has a way to increase health. He can heal and he can give extra health to his troops, but he's got a little less health than him. So you've got to hit him a little bit harder and faster. Uh, this is when the earlier builds I've got. So I'm just trying out different drop pod troops initially. As you'll note, this deck here didn't play the mission. So I ran without the mission first to kind of see how I liked it without playing the mission and just kind of hammering bodies, drawing cards using your standard uh, Thousand Suns approach, as it were. That's always nice getting that 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 battle honor. Quite frankly, I, I like I just like I said I like I like Warlords. Good. Marks of Chaos are really good. Uh, following last year's change to them, so the fact that they can enhance whether it's additional health, Nurgle, which used to be the worst, to Terror, or just a plus one, plus one, that's really nice. And then you throw down some troops that can, you know, gain a mark of chaos as a resolution. Yeah, that just makes some bodies keep the game even, 
get the board. The fact that he's leaving Jubak alive this long is a big mistake on his part, but I've baited him out with other troops, so I don't think he's got enough time to respond. That's probably the best play. Keeps that unit alive. Three health. I don't have a whole lot of options on the board, but I've got a lot of stuff in hand. i got a lot of stuff in hand here. Uh, we're just going to use the four just to deal with it, and then that'll let me play some, some stuff. Draw some cards. Let's why not? Why not? Let's do some damage. I just did the Oath of Weird Make video uh, last week, so it's kind of nice running into an Oather following that video. Different build, um, different cards altogether. I don't run these guys. They're not bad, but I don't run them. They don't have reward. I like I like things with flank. I like things with reward. But he's also not running the mission. So it's a little different. And unfortunately, uh, when you leave Jubak along, alone for too long, then uh, you basically give Jubak things to do. And that's always a bad idea. Uh, especially when you have got warded troops that you can't then destroy. So I think he's like, I'll just do whatever I can to, to whittle down the health and you know, maybe ignore this massive beast. I think at this point he realized like, there's nothing he can do or that that's just going to hurt. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt hard. It doesn't matter if I'm overdrawing or not. The amount of damage that I'm doing here is a little ridiculous. And I've got Marks of Chaos in hand. I think that this one here, oh, oh, created by Jubox. So I was copying them from his deck. Interesting, I totally missed that. I didn't even realize that he had Marks of Chaos in his deck. I'm not sure what he's going for. That's a, that's a strange play. So, I mean, it's not difficult to get Marks of Chaos just from playing cards, not even using the Battle Honor. So the mission is very achievable. And then to go with that, you've got... I mean, this game's going to wrap up here pretty, pretty quick. Even if he draws his Ragnarok, he can't target the, uh, the, the, the Fab 20, 20 job. He can clear my board, except for this massive unit that's just going to do all the work for me. Which is what I... But I like the Oether. Keep playing Oether, guys. Oether is not a bad option currently. Uh, he, he's 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 probably I would say number three in the Space Wolf tier with the, with the uh, Titans out there. I think Russ and Bulvi are going to be edging out just because of the extra attacks to end the games faster. And then you've also got uh, Ward with Bulvi. Yeah. You know, what's not to like? Just a lot of damage. Get the Vengeful Spirit Finisher. Let's just do it. Face. So, that was the non-mission build and play. Uh, testing that out. And following that, I made some changes. I incorporated the mission. And I said, okay, let's go mission heavy. And what do we need for that? We need to take out some cards. And we need to put some cards in. So, I found that I was trying out the... Uh, the Coggard Squad, because I like the drop pod, and even though it's a 3-3, it's basically a 3-5, and you can get it with second wave. But there's not a whole lot to it. Murdask is definitely still better because it's giving you that backlash and drawing a card. And ultimately, I need to be able to play the mission. I need to be able to get Marks of Chaos, so I need to get ways to get Marks of Chaos. So in place of the 3-3, what I actually have is I have the Dark Tech Addict. Uh, which is a new card from the Galaxy and Flames expansion. This isn't an Astartes, but as a resolution, I'm getting a Chaos Mechandrite into my hand. And what this does is this is a play that I can basically use him and either get one, two, maybe a couple more, depending on if I have other targets drawing fire, get some Chaos Mechandrites. Those give Marks of Chaos to Infantry or Astartes. And then those are one energy. Because what I was looking is like, how can I get Marks of Chaos without putting Marks of Chaos in my deck? Because I could just have two one energy marks of chaos. The problem with that is that's a throwaway tactic. It doesn't do anything for me if I don't have anything on the board. So then I looked at the chaos troops that generate marks of chaos, and you've got you've got the uh, the Brotherhood, which has to survive. The Brotherhood is a relentless two three. Add a taint of chaos to be in this mark of chaos, or you've also got the. Uh, the Horse Occultists, which have to survive and then attack the Warlord to get a Tainted Chaos. So the uh, the Dark Tech Adept 
totally just bypasses that by simply playing them and getting that resolution. And I'm going to get a mark of chaos. So then let's say the next turn I play a troop and a Stardes. I use my battle honor, which gives it a mark of chaos. And then I play that chaos mechanite. That's two marks of chaos. Now, throw in the fact that maybe that squad happens to be a Zetska squad, which at the end of the turn is going to gain a mark of chaos. That's three marks of chaos from one troop in one turn. On top of that, the big thing is that is a troop that just got three marks of chaos. So it is a it is a large fat troop. Obviously, uh, talking marks of chaos on the Stardis, Sergar Tarpost, the host of the Lodge Master, just a solid legendary. This this guy here, uh, just a demon Chad. Um, if you've got multiple Astartes out, that's going to be multiple marks of chaos. That's going to be off your list. You've got Zetska squad again. That's a guaranteed one mark of chaos. Two if they if your opponent has got a troop out there. Chandan squad is the flanker. No, not the flanker. Sorry, the uh, Asthma Dial squad. That's the new one. The flanking. Battle honor gain a mark of chaos. That's another way to possibly get two marks of chaos if you can flank it and get a battle honor and then also have a unit that you can use to Mars battle honor. Chandan squad is just a solid 6 3. And that's an Astartes that I want to either give a mark of chaos to, maybe a mark of Nurgle if I'm really lucky, um, or just something that is going to draw some ire from my opponent and allow me to, to get to the long game. I only have one treachery in here. And this is this is a card that I'm kind of on the fence about putting a second copy of because this gives marks of chaos to all my Astartes troops, which is great if I've got multiple Astartes. The problem is that's a, that is a combo play. That's not something I can necessarily do on curve. Tybalt Mars ability battle honor allows me to give it on curve as long as there's a troop to slay. This is a good card. Treachery is a good card if I play a muster for Lupercal at nine energy. And then I give, you know, six, uh, five Abaco squads, Marks of Chaos. Even better if I've triggered the mission prior to that. So then I have two Marks of Chaos on all those Abaco squads, and it's really become nasty things. Uh, Murda Squad is just going to draw me cards. That's never a bad thing. Scrota Squad has a Rally, gains a Mark of Chaos, so that's pretty solid. And as a six drop, I feel like that's pretty good, because they've got Drop Pod 2, so they're a five five but they actually have two bonus health they're going to take some action to get rid of and then they get a mark of chaos which is going to increase those stats as well as potentially give them something else now i took out one quick fire and i added a caban squad and i only added one for the simple fact that he's he's handy to use his rally to damage a troop so that Tybalt Mark can then attack and get that Mark of Chaos and the Mark of Chaos can go on the Combat Squad, whether it's a 3 health troop or a 4 health troop. I also only added one because it is possible that it would uh, water down my second wave. If I have two of them, I really don't want to water down my second wave and pull two Kabant Squads, which are just two twos that don't get their Rally effect. So I kept one in there as a pinch, but typically what I want my second wave to get is I want to get to either get my Murdask or my Grover squad. And that's really it. It's not going to get uh, Dark Adept. It may get the one Kabant, but it's not going to get two Kabants. And ideally, if I get Kabant in my starting hand, I keep that so that I don't uh, waste it with a second wave. Even if I'm playing against a Mono Warlord, that's still just a two-body I'll throw down just as a distraction if I have nothing else. Um, so what else do we've got here? We've got Jubok as a distraction just because it's always good. As you saw in the last game, it's never a bad idea to have Jubok. I have one outflank because outflank is just necessary. Uh, and I've got two muster for Lupercal and the old Vengeful Spirit to, sing, to, to, to end up things. Now, one thing that you notice here that I don't have is I don't have any sort of stealth hate. Again, I've kind of talked about that in a couple of my other videos. That's just my preference. I'll take my chances, and if I lose to stealth, I lose to stealth. Otherwise, I hit hard or I hit wide. And Frag Grenade is kind of in there to help me with Jaegers. If stealth is a problem for you, you could consider uh, Informant Network, which isn't which isn't terrible. It's not bad. Um, you could also consider maybe a, maybe like a defensive satellites or something like that. But I feel like 13 tactics, 17 troops for a mission build when I want to be putting troops down to give them marks of chaos. If everything that they have is stealth, then my stuff isn't going to get marks of chaos. But if I'm breaking stealth just to kill their units, that's only something I can do one or two times in a game. So the mission isn't going to be my strategy anyways. 
So in that game, I'm scrapping the mission in place of just hitting hard with all the troops and tactics that I've got, which includes the two chariot of gods, uh, maybe using drilling sight to pull out a Targost early, as well as the muster for Lupercal or Vengeful Spirit finish. So with all of that said, let's take a look at a couple more games and I'll kind of weigh in my thoughts as far as things that you need to be aware of when you're trying to play Mission Mark. So when you're playing Mission Mar, the biggest thing is starting hand. This is a good starting hand, even though I'm not going first. Um, Targost is just, if he sticks, he's going to do work. And even if he doesn't stick, he forces your opponent to blow Let's blow what they can to get rid of him because he is he's a, he's a pain. Drawing Kavant, that's really nice. So we're going to start off the turn. We're going to throw out that 2-1. And then we've got the ability to give ourselves... Uh, uh, the the counterattack, or not the counterattack, rather the, the battle or not. This play here, I messed up on. I messed up on, as I was doing I was trying to remember, like, okay, I want to be able to play Kabant and get the battle honor, and then I forgot that Kabant deals the two damage, so then I was like, oh, well, shoot, because I wanted to have two troops down there, one with a mark of chaos, no turrets. Thankfully, I was able to recover. He didn't play a uh, three health troop here. He played the double turrets, which allows me to clear both turrets and still get the mark of chaos. So I still got what I wanted to do, but it did start off kind of uneasy for me here. Now, this is a terror troop that he can't really uh, ignore. So he's going to have to respond to that, and take damage to the face. He's got the stalwart defenders on curve, so it's going to be it's going to be one of those kind of games. That's okay. We'll we'll do what we can do. We're gonna start off with Targost, get him out there. Again, if he survives, he's gonna just start ticking off marks of chaos here, not to mention you know, help me get rid of stuff on the board, draw draw heat from my opponent in every possible way. This is a little annoying, I won't lie. But if I get unstoppable, I can get rid of one of those. And if I don't get unstoppable, I can get rid of that. So I get the unstoppable. So we're going to go for that. And I'm debating giving Targos a second Mark of Chaos, but I figure with everything here, the way the, uh, the fists run, I want to get more troops on the board. Number one, to take down my mission if possible, but also to dilute. Like if I put like everything into Targos and he does the retribution, then I lose... Uh, the, the tactics that I do here. Instead, I've got two bodies on the board, and I've got my turn to really kind of uh, sell it from there. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Draw a card up, and then we'll go ahead and do the mustard, because the more stuff we get on the board against the fist, the sooner the better. Now you'll note that this deck here does not have the um, direct assault. The seven energy, all your units get plus three attack this turn. Um, I opted to take that out. I think if you're playing the mission build, that's not your end game. Your end game is to get lots of marks of chaos and powerful troops to stick around, maybe some greater demon transformations. That'll do the work for you. But if you're not going to play mission, then that is that's that's your end game between Vengeful Spirit as well as your other tactics. Just put in one direct assault. And with your uh, your musters for the War Master, and those will do the work. And if you don't have muster for the War Master, then you're going to probably put in more damage dealing cards, maybe some other tank, uh, troops that have rally damage effects, as opposed to you know uh, the muster, which just puts down a lot of bodies to work with that. But so far, we're taking things down here. We're going to give ourselves another Mark of Chaos. We're going to get two Marks of Chaos with the Zetska Squad. The mission is going to be accomplished next turn because I got a battle honor coming like he's can blow a lot of stuff here and I think I think he kind of does get lucky which really makes me sad yeah he gets that Zetsu squad I was really hoping to get a green demon out of this thing and just he gets the he's up I mean this is what Diaz does this is the resilience of the Imperial Fist he gets the pings he does not get that ping thankfully so and then we get the Dark Adept. We'll, we'll have to stall our uh, ascent until next turn, as it were. But it's super important that I get rid of the turrets and this thing here, um, so he doesn't have any options. And I don't want that to be able to shoot, but I also... 
I also want to get that mission out so next turn I, I can just play at 10 energy. So I'm going to use my German Sight to do the stun, the smoke grenade and on this unit. Because I don't mind if, if Diaz... Uh, yeah, if, if Diaz is able to not attack any of these things and break it, this is stunned, or not, sorry, this is, this is poisoned. Poisoned. So it's going to die. It does. It's one thing that it does, and then it's dead. That's it. Diaz isn't making any new turrets, which means that this won't be able to benefit uh, and use its resolution. So, you know, this is a free mark of chaos. And he's up on the board. He's got some jam options. I don't like it. So we're just kind of playing with what we can. And I'm going to save this Chaos Mechandrite because I, I don't want to throw it on something that's going to get jammed. I'm glad I got the extra health here. So my troop here can stick around, which means now he has a, a, a random chance. Is he going to jam my Zetska or is he going to jam my, my Murdask? I kind of hope he jams the Zetsa so I can get a card draw with Murdask. And he actually gives me the card draw and does the jam, which is fine. I still have a full health troop, and I got my card draw out of it, and this is still a game. Still very much a game. And he doesn't know I've got the Asmodal, which is already gaining a mark of chaos on the rally, and then it's going to gain a second mark of chaos just for killing his turret. Which is good, and then that's a bait for his uh, his watcher in the dark. Is his watcher in the dark going to jam it, or is he gonna, just going to jam the little the little Abacal squad? The more troops I have on the board, the harder it is for him to be able to do what he wants to do. So he's got two stalwart defenders. I think he's hoping to try to buy some time here. But that's not going to be enough. I can clear all this except for the little watchers. It's going to give me another mark of chaos. Look at all these marks of chaos. If I could just make myself a, a greater demon, everything would be happy. We we'll use that terror troop. Terror is just really good against the Imperial Fist in general. And I think he kind of sees the end times are coming. He doesn't have anything to hit. So. Well, when you're playing the mission, there are some decks that just make the mission hard to achieve. Primarily decks that don't have troops out for you to get your body to the to. Uh, Those decks are, uh, whether it is a Mono Warlord, uh, Angrange, or the Khan, uh, Connor and Kurz, or the Solo, whatever it is, there's not a whole lot of troop interaction. There's no board for you to slay. That makes it hard. The White Scars really can play a lot from their hand and not leave you a lot on, on the table to work with. Uh, Jang Saikon especially has got the ability to kind of kill your little two one pings once he makes his little troop. This is very reminiscent, very reminiscent of the, uh, I think the event debut or event release of Jang Saikon, where there was a Tibet Mar in the deck too, and Jang Sai could just single-handedly uh, deal with the threat his little troop so it was a hard game for Tibbet War. and he's got the mission I've got a mission it's a matter of who will get mission first whose mission will be more effective for the other my 6-3 is a nice 6-3 if it survives but when he is pinging it or bouncing the 1-2 or he's got a fast that he can throw into it I mean he's wasting resources here that's good I'd rather have that go in my troop than my phase but he has given me some uh He's giving me a battle honor here that I can throw down and get a mark of chaos on my troop. I'm going to ping him. I'm going to ping Stun him. Stun, ping, poison. Uh, so he can't break that drop pod right away. Make it a little bit hard. So he's got to di divest other cards from hand. And at, at least I'm still drawing a card here. So we're still getting one. No, I'm not going to get the mission off, or if I do, it'll be a rarity. So really what I'm trying to do is put out more stuff that he has to answer and the chances of something surviving so I can whittle him down. Because the White Scars have got, especially once they get that mission, like they can combo, they can do a lot of things, they can chain a lot of cards. And he's spending some stuff here. I was surprised that he did that. I think he just did it just for the streak, and I feel like that was a waste. 
because you know, he's going to take eight damage here. That probably he should have not taken. Like, this is dead. I know he can make a scout here, and that's not going to survive, so I have to eat it. But I'll figure, okay, well, let's do this. Let's throw down. Now we've got a 6-6 six, six with the drop pod. And, you know, yeah, he's going to have a streak. What does he have in hand to make it work? He's not be making more cards. He's wasting his action there. I'm still up nine health, but he's got enough energy to bounce this. So I'm going to lose my six, six. I still have a fast troop. I've got a troop here drawing cards and he's not leaving me anything to use my battle on or off. Anything to give marks of chaos. He's, he's taking his mission down. I am taking it down just simply by rallies more than anything else. So that's not where I want to be. That's where I am. And if I use my ability here, I know all he's going to do is kill, ping, kill. So I'm going to hit the, uh, the, the face attack. Plus I've got that vengeful spirit and that's really just I'm two turns away from ending this game. I just have to get there. Once the white scars hit that set that energy curve, they, uh, they get really deadly. But on top of that, He's taken off his mission with the street cards, so I have to watch out for him hitting the precognition with the uh, quick reflexes, maybe healing up with the uh, the three star rhino or four star rhino. I forget the number of stars on the rhino. Uh, so I have to hit him. I have to hit him hard. I'm gonna give another mark of chaos. This thing's got two marks of chaos. We'll bait it out. We'll hope that he he's gonna blow his other. Uh, Flanking troop just to get rid of the 6-6. Six, six. I'll still have a 2-3 on the board. This is 12 damage here. Alright, he's got the, the, the Storm Lance. Okay, well that sucks. And there's the healing. So it is... It's a Golden Star Rhino. It's not even a number. It's a, it's a color. I should have known. Golden Star Rhino. So there we go. He's got a front line now. He's got more health. Thankfully I have flanking. And the flanking comes in really handy now with the Titans. Um, any any faction that can flank, get your flankers in there because they are going to be super necessary in games against the Titans currently. And we're going to do that, and we're just going to have to uh, we're going to have to roll it the hard way. We're going to have to roll it the hard way. Hope that I can get one damage in here. This will do some damage. For me. We've got the mission, but I don't have any Astartes in hand, any any Sons of Horus troops in hand. And I really don't want to play Muster for the Wormmaster in this game. Because as I said, Muster for the Wormmaster, he can play like three cards and just juggle his, his scout and kill my entire seven energy play. So it's kind of a dead card in this game. If you're playing against Angron, you have to worry about the Conqueror as a response. Uh, I now have got 12 damage. He can heal up, but I'm just going to pound him. I'm going to keep my distance here, give myself some health. And we'll, we'll just make a troop to kind of bait him. Either bait this troop, bait that troop, or bait a scout play from hand. He's got his mission. I'm not using mine because I understand that it's kind of a, a moot point at this, at this stage. And I think he is looking for something to hit me hard, uh, finish me down. Maybe he's hoping I don't have Chariot of the Gods. Maybe he's hoping he can give himself precognition. Power of that that mission trigger, where he's drawing a card when he plays streak and reducing his cost by two. I mean, we were even Steven, and now he's got nine cards. He's like drawn four cards here. He's playing a free one that he's copied. Eventual spirit doesn't matter. As he will be but yeah, like I mean, he's gone through a, a half of his remaining deck in the turn that he played the mission, and I did some significant damage. I was at 19. I'm down. I'm down to 10. But it won't matter because I've got the direct damage approach. And that's really what you have to rely on in those games. Is You have to rely on some damage from your troops. Don't attack with your warlord because there's not, you need to get to the end game to get your chariot of the gods or get your vengeful spirit. So, with all that said, Mission, mission Mar versus Standard Mar. So, Mission Mar is fun. It's fun to play. It, it's totally achievable. You can throw in a second treachery if you really wanted to. If you don't have all the troops that I'm showing off here, some other things to consider would be maybe um, 
maybe in Marks of Chaos, uh, possibly, or you could throw in a one prayer, Praetorian Corrosion. I really wouldn't recommend it. It's just an over cost card. Maybe a Vadark Squad, just because it also gets a buff for Troops with Marks of Chaos, but it doesn't get Marks of Chaos itself, so it's kind of a wasted, uh, wasted card more than anything. And then maybe just some additional healing uh, or you know, Brotherhood, um, maybe some Marks of Chaos, maybe the neutral card, I think it gives two Marks of Chaos, or better yet, if you don't have, say if you don't have Treachery, you could play this terrible Triumph of Chaos, but Treachery is a two energy card versus a five energy, so don't do that, don't do that, uh, but you could play, you could play Corrupted, Corrupting Influence to give two Marks of Chaos, if you're desperate for it, or just consider a single warrior lodge for a plus two plus two to your troops with marks of chaos, which is going to be all your starties that you've been giving marks of chaos to. Um, but yeah, mission mar is fun. I think standard mar is more effective. And what is standard mar really? We get rid of the mission. We get rid of a couple of the troops that are you know. Like Scrota Squad, you could lose Scrota Squad. You could put in the two quick fires. You could toss out the Kabant Squad and get rid of that and throw in a second smoke grenade or throw in uh, some rally damage. As I said, Nagahurst isn't bad in a, in a uh, standard Mar. One frontal assault if you're playing with Muster for Lupercal. If you're not playing with Muster for Lupercal, you don't need to worry about frontal assault or Muster. And then instead, you've got two Trade of the Gods. You've got your Vengeful Spirit. You've got the the Imperial Army guys, the Mortar Squad, Hanan's Mortars. You're not really worried about giving them Marks of Chaos, but they've got a nice rally there that hits pretty hard. You can also drop in a Defensive Satellites, maybe a Kodrak Squad if you really wanted to. Informant Network, like your standard control tactics at that point. Maybe two Frag Grenades. I think one is enough. Don't run Embracing Temptation. I've thought about this card. I've tried playing this card. This card doesn't give you a Temptation. It puts three copies of it in your deck and then draws a card. You are better off having Treachery, right? Like this, this gives you, this gives you three copies of Temptation. Temptation, not, not Treachery. So Temptation is this card. Gives a mark of chaos to a friendly infantry in Astartes, and you draw a card. So for two energy, you're drawing a card and giving a mark of chaos. For two energy, you get three copies of those in your deck, and you draw, but you don't actually get it in your hand. Or for the same energy, two energy, you can actually just give straight marks of chaos to all your Astartes troops. Treachery is the better play. Don't water down your deck with embracing temptation. Trust me, it's not worth it. It really isn't. That is just not, the better play is having treachery, not temptation. It's because the Sons of Horus are traitors, so you, you gotta embrace that. Um, also, the Coggart Squad as a one-up isn't bad in place of the Kabant Squad if you want to go that way, just because it's, like I said, it's conditional 3-5. Uh, and maybe like an Ornitas Barge, or I would stay away from vehicles right now with all the ordnance out there. That's just not a safe way to go. But you could throw in a Silent Death. Um, you could put in maybe an Ambassador Melgator uh, or a Vorax isn't a bad inclusion. That's always kind of a good card to have. Kaiser Lane wouldn't be bad. Lord Malkiel is not bad. These are legendary cards you don't have to have. But for the most part, Tybalt Mar is very Sons of Horus focused. There's, I mean, look at like in this deck here. This is the mission build. But I've got one, two, three, four non Sons of Horus cards in this deck. It's pretty good. That like that's very Sons of Horus focused. And really, as far as legendaries go, obviously because we're playing the mission, we've got the mission, we've got Targost, and we've got Second Wave and Vengeful Spirit. That's it. It's pretty cheap as far as legendaries go, too. Jubak, you can toss. I mean, like, so then you can kind of download. Like, he's, he's not bad, but I mean, like, it's not required for the deck. So there's a lot of ways to go. Ultimately, Mission Mar is fun. I've had fun with Mission Mar, but I 
honestly, I think I've had a better success with non-Mission Mar. Mission Mar, the, the, the Chosen of the Four, the Sons of Lupercal, very fun, very thematic. It makes the game feel good when you're getting lots of marks of chaos in your troops and seeing the fun buffs. But when it comes to just being more effective and spearheading and using the Sons of Horus tactics to your to your best advantage so that you're winning, I recommend really sticking with what works. Uh, and I think anybody else will tell you, I mean, that, that that's not news, uh, but there's nothing wrong with playing for fun either. If you want to play for fun, you want to make the mission work, trust me, it's entirely possible. This is not a bad mission. This is an achievable mission, and it's a fun mission, and it's worth trying out. And have fun with it. And some some level that you're at, might, this might be just what you're looking for. If you want to push harder, and you want to try harder, then guess what? There's there's other decks for you, there's other cards for you too, and that's not a problem. That's, that's A-OK. -okay. So, with all that said... I hope that's been helpful for you. I hope that's been useful for you. And uh, keep checking out the channel. More deck lists coming soon. We've also got some spoilers coming up for the final leg. Uh, the new cards for the old factions in the Titan Death expansion next week. So looking forward. Or this week. Next week. This week. Next week. Looking forward to it. So keep playing Legions.